Tell us about your day and when you were evacuated and how that all happened. Uh, we were actually evacuated this uh, early afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, we have been residents for about four to five years. We've been through fires prior. Um, this was something very different. It was just it engulfed like red, yellow, orange, like skies within minutes. It went from blue skies to just dark. It was something that local residents of 30 years had never seen before. Wow. Got you. And, and, yeah. and you, you say it was just the, the look of it, the flames and how fast it moved. That's what made this fire so different from the uh, past experiences you've had with fires? Well, actually, no. The difference between this fire between uh, uh, compared to other fires was this one, it, it crept like up slow to where it was blue skies in the morning and then hours later it just got darker and darker and then before you know the whole entire as as a as opposed to like a flume of smoke mm -hmm. the whole entire sky was just covered in orange and red ashes and smoke and uh, you couldn't even breathe like it was just like and it was so What's the word? Eerie, quiet. You go outside and it was just like not even a leaf blowing, but ashes were falling. And that's when I had asked my neighbor who had lived in Wrightwood for 30 plus years, like, what do you think we should do? Is everything okay? And she was like, no, I haven't seen this. Like, we, we should go. And that was prior to any evacuation warning, which in Wrightwood, we would always get an evacuation warning. We'd hear helicopters, we'd see sirens. It was quiet as as the day, like, like nothing mm. was going on. And then before you know it, we couldn't even see anything. The smoke was heard in our lungs and we just decided to leave on our own. Oh. And then we got an alert. As we were packing up, then we get an alert, like mandatory evacuation. And the roads were bumper to bumper. And it was, it was, it was utter chaos. I mean, Leo, we're talking about these evacuation orders going all the way up north to Highway 138 now. You know, yeah. our assignment editor was talking about a 25 mile stretch of the evacuation orders. What is going uh -huh. through your mind tonight as you are away from your home and unsure, uncertain <laughs> of where this fire is going? Honestly, I'm worried about my chickens. I, <laughs> I left my chickens. Like, I, I mean, I, I try to pack up all my animals as sure. much as possible, and my chickens are there. I don't know, you know, I, I packed up my cat, my hamster, and my chickens. I, I had to let them go. Because you were in I, such I, a hurry. I, I, huh? Because you were in such a hurry? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, I, my kids, of course, were number one priority, and then my dogs and my cats, my hamster. But my chickens, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I just, I just had to, I had to prioritize what to do. And like I said, you know, it was there was no evacuation warnings. There was no, um, there was no police coming up and down the streets. We just had to run for our lives. Wow, and such a tough decision to make it there. Was. Hopefully, the chickens will be okay. Uh, can you just I hope so too. Er, earlier we we were talking to people, and they uh, we had one resident there in Wrightwood who talked about how he um, went to his neighbor's door and uh, talked with her, and he was reaching out to other neighbors on social media. Uh, what was it like there in your immediate community with your neighbors uh, trying to get out of there safely? Um, we all we all were in communication about. Because they're like I said, I, I've had neighbors that have been there for 30 years, for two years, one six months, but um, and we kind of all just came together and said, you know what? Like at this point, no one's alerting us anymore. Like this isn't normal. Um, so we all just kind of decided on our own when to leave. It was kind of basically up to us. Because there was there was no there was no direction there was no evacuation warning up until like I said we were already packed up and we were in bumper to bumper gridlock is when we got the evacuation notice and like I said the skies were red orange it looked like dark at like four o'clock in the afternoon it was like black 
all my lights were on, my solar lights, like I couldn't even see outside and barely breathe. And yet there was no evacuation warning. It was basically up to us to leave and I had to leave my chickens. All right, that was Leah Potter, an evacuee from Wrightwood. Leah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for your time and we wish you all the best.